Welcome, everyone. It is Proverbs 4 this week. Mm -mm -mm. Like my hat, only because I have no gel in my hair. <laughs> so we're in the rainbow hat. Thanks, Damien, again for this great rainbow hat. <laughs> Just wait for people to jump on. Uh, but while we're doing that, last week I actually forgot to say the third thing of the 52 uh, things that we were supposed to do. One second. Do, 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 do. Welcome, Mr. Brattles. Oh, here we go. So, yeah, you, the, uh, whoops. Each week I was supposed to also say this one thing. So the first week was intention without action will ultimately lead to a life with regret. Number two was you may not be able to change the world, but you can change somebody's world. And number three, which is what I missed last week, was adversity is simply life's preparation for greatness. 100%. Sorry, I just got a notification <laughs> uh, from a message from a company, which I'll reply to uh, when I can. Um, so yeah, adversity is simply life's preparation for greatness. What does that mean? What does that mean? And I guess everyone's going to take that differently. Um, because everyone's understanding of greatness is going to be different. I mean, greatness for what? Um, greatness for ourselves. Are we looking for greatness in the sense um, that people will think that we are great within our community or within, you know, whatever, or greatness as in greatness that we, of ourselves, that we can overcome quite a few things, which is what happens when we go through adversity. When you pull through and when you go through adversity, you grow in some direction. You can grow, you can digress as growth. Uh, but really you want to, you want to progress. So adversity is definitely a teacher that we can all learn from and become greatness or lead towards greatness in the future. But everyone's interpretation of what greatness is, is obviously going to be different. Hopefully you want to get to that greatness where you are not just benefit, benefiting uh, for yourself, but you're benefiting for those around you within your community and within um, your family and friends to pass on um, knowledge and uh, wisdom to them from all the things that you've learned from your own adversities. And they hopefully will share it to you as well. Um, and that's the whole best thing about the human experience is that we are collaborators. We are, uh, we like to connect with one another and really help each other out as best we can. And that's what I feel we should all do as kings and queens is help each other out with what adversities we've gone through and what lessons we've learned from our adversity teachers um, and able to pass it on so that some, we can ease someone else's uh, discomfort um, or pain when they go through uh, similar situations because not everyone goes through the exact same situation. So that's number three. I will say number four later after we do our uh, study on Proverbs chapter four. How exciting. Welcome, Sam. How you going? <laughs> All right, so first we'll pray. Diligent thank you for a wonderful day today. The weather was absolutely amazing. Um, thank you for allowing us to experience great weather, especially when we were told that we we're gonna be in the wet uh, season of this, of well, this wet, time during this summer, <laughs> this, this season of summer. Um, but thank you very much for the weather. Thank you for the, uh, the great energy and the great people that we surround ourselves with. And thank you for um, music. Thank you for um, to be able to hear and listen. Um, I know uh, Sam on here is uh, got a little bit of deafness and I have a little bit of deafness. So I just want to pray, bless, oh, thank you, Jesus, that I, we do have hearing that we can still hear, potentially hear. Um, and thank you for everyone that's going to be joining this uh, lesson. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. 
sometime. Sorry, that's a bit loud. <laughs> uh, this one's called The Blessing. Ah, oh, welcome. Welcome, people. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite songs, actually. Uh, and it's pretty much blessings to the sense of uh, the song is to you. I hope that you are blessed, that you are blessed with good health and good friendships and some peace. Amen. <laughs> To chapter four. Mm -mm. Now I did actually get a chance to actually read this one beforehand. Thank you, Brett, for the reminder. <laughs> uh, so I'm actually going to read from the King James version. Sorry, the New King James version, only because I find it's actually a little bit better than the New Living Translation. So please bear with me. Chapter four, verse one. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father, and give attention to no understanding. No, as in, I know you. So, no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, Let your heart retain my words, keep my commands, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, wisdom. And she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. 
therefore get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honour when you embrace her. She will place on your head and an ornament of grace, a cloud of a, a cloud, <laughs> a crown of glory. She will deliver to you. So this is just words from um, the father to their child, pretty much saying and encouraging uh, them to seek wisdom, to seek understanding, um, uh, because it will, as he says, in the sense, um, you know. Wisdom will give, will bring you honor. You know, it will. Um, on the New Living Translation, um, it says, uh, "If you prize wisdom, she will make you great." Um, dun -dun 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 -dun. And also, she will protect you. So don't turn your back on her. So, and and it does. When you take on board wisdom, and when you act on your wisdom, you save yourself a lot more suffering <laughs> uh, and you save yourself a lot more um, pain, uh, discomfort um, in the long run. I think one that really rings to me is boundaries. If you don't go through the short discomfort right now of setting boundaries with someone right now, then in the future, you're going to have resentment and you're going to have, you're going to be put, putting yourself in a lot more discomforting situation, future dis, uh, situations. So you could save yourself a whole year of discomfort and resentment towards that person because you don't really want to do what uh, they've asked you to do. You didn't set that boundary from the very beginning. Um, you're obviously going to face that for a whole longer year. Whereas if you go for the discomfort of the, you know, the, lot more may, maybe a lot more discomfort right now setting that boundary and saying no I cannot do this for you I'm sorry um, that goes I'm uncomfortable with doing that then you're going to save yourself a whole lot of discomfort in the future so take the wisdom of boundaries to heart <laughs> save yourself from future um, embarrassment discomfort unpleasantness etc etc let's continue here, my son, so here, so when he says here, it's here, not, not here, here. Here, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I want to take uh, a special note on the concept of the word um, here, when he says here. Um, the way they say here is a call to action. It's not, oh, just listen and observe. It's no, act on what I'm telling you. So when he says, hear, hear my son and receive my sayings. To receive someone's uh, advice or um, uh, words of wisdom, you actually have to choose to receive them in your heart. You have to actually take that action to actually let it sink in. There's that choice of acting on actually receiving it. Sure, you can listen to something and you can memorize it, but to take it to heart is an act, is an action in itself. And there's a lot of times that we don't, uh, we don't actually do that. We can obviously all the time listen to our parents and listen to their advice, but not actually take it on board and actually follow through on those those words of advice or that wisdom. So we bring it on ourselves, really. The uh, the detriment and pain and suffering that comes with it when we don't actually hear, when we don't actually take act action on that um, hearing and that, you know, receiving the, the wisdom. So I'll just repeat that. Hear my son and receive my sayings and the years of your life will be many. Pretty self-explanatory. You will have a long life if you listen <coughs> or if you take action onto what I'm telling you. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in right paths, correct paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. And when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction. Do not let go. Keep her for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not walk in the way of evil. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. <clears throat> For they do not sleep unless they have done evil. 
and their sleep is taken away unless they make someone fall. And this is actually quite interesting because there are people out there that do, um, do choose to cause more suffering for other people. And actually just reading, um, I've just read, finished reading 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos by Jordan B. Peterson. And he says in the book somewhere, I can't remember exactly where, I'm actually reading the physical book as well. So when I get there, I'll mark it. But he says, we are the only species that will actually choose consciously to cause suffering for someone else out of our own pleasure or out of our own uh, personal gain. Um, animals, plants don't do that so much. They only are in the here and now and what they need to do to survive. They won't plan ahead to uh, torture another animal before it, they eat it. Whereas we, in a sense, do to other human beings. We are the only species that will actually cause suffering and that's what makes us in a sense, evil, because we are actually able to choose to um, bring on suffering to someone else out of our own pleasure, out of our own entertainment, so to speak. So <clears throat> when it says here that the, the evil do not sleep unless they have done evil for that day, like in the New Living Translation, it says, um, for evil people can't sleep until they've done their evil deed for the day. They can't rest until they've caused someone to stumble. And we all have that choice daily, um, that what we do, how it's going to affect someone or how it's going to affect people. And if we choose in a sense to do something that say, for example, revenge, um, to get someone back, uh, we're actually choosing to do evil out of our own selfish uh, fulfillment or out of our own selfish desires, in a sense. And we're, sometimes we can get caught up that we just want to harm someone or we just want to tell someone off out of our own, you know, justification. We want to justify ourselves and we want to uh, make them feel small, make them belittle them and make them feel like, you know, crap or feel like dirt. You know, that's in a sense tied to evil because you're wanting to destroy or destruct their... Uh, their self-worth, you want to destruct their or destroy their sense of uh, value as being of being a human being a human being <laughs> um, And that's evil and sometimes like, I know in the past that when I was uh, you know a few years ago where there was someone that I really was um, frustrated with and I would, wouldn't it would, it would take me a long time to go to sleep because you're thinking there, just like, I just want to do this to them. I just want to do that to them. I just want them to feel the pain that I'm feeling. Like, it's not it's not fair that they get away with it and they're not affected by it when I am affected by it. But we're really, when we're starting to uh, plan a plot of revenge um, to embarrass them or humiliate them, we're actually on the path of evil then. We're not actually on the path of love or compassion or understanding or wisdom. <laughs> so it says here, avoid it. Do not travel on that path, you know turn away from it and pass on. Um, moving on after, yeah, after it says um, they can't rest until they've caused someone to stumble. For they eat the bread of wickedness. So the bread is a, obviously a metaphor. It's not an actual physical bread of wickedness. Okay, let's just clear that up. It is, <laughs> it is um, a metaphor. It's consuming, consuming wickedness. Um, for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. That's an interesting concept. I guess when you have avoided, um, your insecurities um, or your um, limiting self-beliefs. Um, when you've shaded or, or uh, guarded yourself or blinded yourself or numbed your pain, so to speak, and not actually sit in the uncomfortableness and the vulnerability of your own emotions, 
you don't know why you are behaving the way you behave. So let's say, for example, people that um, are, have an addiction, and we all have addictions to some degree. We all want to uh, use a substance or use something, whether that be, you know, Netflix is a major one now. Oh, even relationships. Sometimes we can use relationships as a way to, um, well, codependency is a good one of this. We have to be with someone consistently because we don't like being with ourselves. We don't like confronting ourselves. So, um, and when we are by ourselves, we stumble, but we don't know why. And it's because we haven't really delved deep into ourselves and for our, and looked at our insecurities, looked at the things that are, are you know, limiting us or stopping us from seeing the truth or um, seeing a different or better perspective of how we could actually live our life without so much suffering. Um, so that's a, that's a, the way of the wicked is like darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. And eventually you get to that, like you, with people that um, do avoid, and you see them on, on a destructive path where they're just addicted uh, to, like say, a drug or alcohol. And every, every weekend um, they become so drunk and blinded that they don't even know what they're doing and they're just lost, so to speak. And it's because, and they've just, and you can see that they're stumbling over something they don't even know that they, they or something that they're avoiding because they can't, they don't want to dig into the deep dive of themselves into the darkness. So it's always good to see a therapist or a counsellor. <laughs> I'm going to see a counsellor this year. I'm quite excited, actually. Uh, now, continuing on. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Again, that's an action. Incline your ear. You know, pay attention. It's an action. And you've got to actually act on that listening concept. <clears throat> Do not let them depart from your eyes. Deep, uh, deep, keep deep. Keep them in the midst of your heart. So this is continuing on to his sayings. You know, do not let his let don't let his sayings depart from his eyes, um, for they are for they are life to those who find them and and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. I'll just read the New Living Translation because that was a little bit of a um, when I was reading that didn't sound so understanding. So verse twenty three it says, "Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring." For out of it spring the issues of life. And in the New Living Translation it says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Um, to 24. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and, and put perverse lips far away from you. Sorry, far from you. Um, have you ever heard of that saying where it's just like, um, average people... I can't remember the exact ones, but it, it, it was average people talk about other people. And then you've got intelligent people talk about ideas or something like that. I can't remember exactly what they're saying. Someone actually even shared it, I think, yesterday. And that's what it reminds me of, is that people that um, consistently gossip about someone else or they um, talk to their friends and they go, oh man, that you know, a lot of the guys do this. And I know a lot of girls would do this well as well. Like it's, it's not... It's not taboo, <laughs> but the guys would get together and be like, oh, that, that chick is hot, you know, and the girls are the same thing. Oh man, that guy on the beach, he was fine. You know, that whole perverse talk, you know, small minds or average minds will talk about people in that context rather than talking about people in the sense of, oh, I wonder uh, what their passions are or what their likes are. You know, what do they stand for? What do they fight for? It'll be interesting to know their story. That's more of the kind of mentality that you want to be on rather than, oh man. Okay, the video just paused for a second, but it's back now. Hopefully it's still working. <laughs> um, so when you uh, start judging someone or start going, just looking at someone because of their attractive qualities, their aesthetically attractive qualities, you're basically just basing their whole human worth on those aesthetic attractive qualities, not who they are as a person or the attributes that they have or the, you know, who they are to someone else, like a family member, like they are a son, they're a brother, um, you know, they're a wife, they're 
um, a mentor to someone. You know, if you just base someone's worth off their attractive looks, then you're not really giving them a fair go of being an actual human being and seeing them as a human being rather than just an attractive flesh. <laughs> uh, so it says here, you know, put away or, you know, put, perv put perverse lips far from you. Don't talk about people in such a pervert manner where all their worth is to you is their aesthetic um, attractive looks. It's not good for the soul. Not good for the soul. <laughs> uh, continuing on. 25. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids um, look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. So but what, the basic, what this basically is saying in these last three verses is have a goal of where you actually want to go. And in this case, it's obviously look straight ahead on this, in the sense of righteousness and of wisdom and of love and compassion. You want to ponder what that means, what, you know, what the person you strive to be, for example. You know, I want to be a strong, confident person within myself. Um, and I want to be, in a sense, seen as uh, someone with dignity and integrity. Well, then what does integrity or dignity mean? look like to you and you need to really actually ponder that and you want to think about exactly what reflects or what behaviors reflect dignity and integrity and you're going to establish that path so when you take that step uh, you're not going to you're, you're walking on, on, a, on a path that is in heading in that direction the minute that you take a step to the right or the left uh, or you sway your eyes and you go oh actually i like that that's that's quite attractive but it's connected to stubbornness or arrogance, then you're swaying off the right path of dignity and integrity. And that's basically what it's saying is if you're on the path of righteousness, if you're on the path of wisdom, uh, ponder, think about what are the behaviors of, or the characteristics of uh, wisdom and, um, um, wisdom and uh, righteousness. You've got to understand and know those for yourself before you can take the step. Because if you find yourself, you, you take a step and you're like, oh, that wasn't righteous. At least you know you're, in the, you're on, the wrong, on, wrong, on the wrong path if you, when you make that, take that step. Or if you ponder that thought and you go and you start judging someone about, you know, what they did, you know, three years ago. And clearly they're not the same person now. And if you're making that judgment and trying to belittle them, then you're obviously not on the righteous path. And you you can take you can bring awareness to yourself and go, okay, that wasn't the right thought, um, especially about someone that I don't even know. You know what what happened three years ago was three years ago. It's not happening now, and I don't know who they are now. So always try and come back and focus and know and and study and research what your path is. Hopefully that's the wisdom path, <laughs> since this whole. Uh, book is about wisdom. Anyway, so that is Proverbs 4. Basically, a father encouraging their son to really seek out wisdom um, <clears throat> and to always take it to heart, you know, hear, listen, take action on the, the words of the, of the advice. Um, stay away from wickedness and people that also... Uh, like I said before, choose to be wicked. They choose uh, to bring discomfort and suffering to someone else. And like I said before, we are apparently the only species that actually chooses consciously to do that for fun, for entertainment, uh, and for our own selfish desires. Uh, so don't, don't go to the path of, of wickedness. Um, and yes, planning exactly what your path looks like to know that you're heading in that direction and that you know that when you step off that, you can go come back, realign to that goal, put your focus back in point uh, so that you, you know you can get put yourself back on track. Anyway, I hope you got something out of that. Now, number four with the 52 things from Adrian's Instagram post. <clears throat> If you're going to think anything today, think bigger. <laughs> I guess that works well with this uh, session, along with the lines of your, your path. You know, we can say, 
Oh, you know, I'll try and be, uh, I won't lie to certain people. And be like, I'll try my best not to lie to um, certain people. Take the bigger thought and go, I'm not going to lie to anyone. Sure, if they ask questions that you feel uncomfortable of answering, you are allowed to say and set that boundary and say, I'm not comfortable uh, discussing this right now, maybe in another time. You don't have to give um, them the whole truth or the truth um, if you don't feel comfortable with them knowing what is really going on with your life or your personal issues. Um, but that's, and you haven't actually lied. You're just being honest and saying, I am not comfortable sharing that with you. Um, so yeah. Or if you think of anything, I don't know, what's something that you can, that you thought of today and that you could think bigger of? What thoughts did I think today? Do, do. Think bigger. If you're going to think anything today, think bigger. Hmm, it's a good one, isn't it? Anyway, I hope you all can ponder on that yourselves. Ah, oh, thank you, Featherston. Jamie, for those kisses. <laughs> Who else is here? Do, do, do. Ah, Corey, you're here. Hello, Corey, how are you? Nick came on and so did Luke for a split second. Oh, well, that is today's little session. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you got something from that. Um, always best to seek out wisdom as best you can. Uh, and if you haven't already, follow my Instagram. Obviously you are if you're watching this. How awkward. Um, <laughs> I mean, people, I'm going to put this up on YouTube later, so... If you're watching this on YouTube, follow me on Instagram, XNDR King. Um, and you can also follow me on Facebook as well. Oh, good to hear that you're good. Well, hello, Annika. Is it Annika? Yes. No, is it? No, Annalisa. Annalisa. I'm probably saying that wrong. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Hope you all have a good night. Thank you for joining me and I will see you next week, same time, 8 p.m. for Proverbs 5. And you're welcome, Leanne. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a good night and see you all later.